What's going on guys, DM9 here, and today we're going to drop into some solos, and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that I use when I drop into Warzone solo, just to A, get your loadout uh, quicker and more efficiently, and then B, start uh, running around uh, Verdance, getting them kills. Now I do want to mention I do stream over on Twitch, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, starting at 7.30 Central Time, with the occasional weekend stream. You can follow me over on Twitter uh, at uh, DM9XD. All the links to all my socials will be down in the description below. And let's get into uh, the solo gameplay. Alright. So first thing I do when I load into a solos game is I look at the map and I try to find a scavenger contract. Now the importance of a scavenger contract, A, you're going to get half decent guns out of them, but you're going to get money and you're going to get plates. And once you complete the scav, you'll actually get a satchel, which for me right off the bat is a big plus in Warzone, getting those eight plates, being able to uh, get into gunfights, take some damage, heal up. Uh, when another person may not already have a satchel or might not have even five plates. Uh, that is the first tip I have is if you're going to load into solos, get that easy cash, grab a scav, even a recon. Those are a little trickier, but get a contract, get it completed as fast as you can. Loot up as you go. If you get a scav from point to point to point, loot those up and keep moving. That was a close one. As you're running through Verdance, getting that scavenger contract done, make sure you're listening for boxes as you run past buildings. Typically, I won't go loot a building if I don't hear a box. I do realize that there are piles of cash that are in buildings, but I find it more beneficial. Hit the buildings with the boxes. There'll be piles of cash in there. Keep getting your scav done. Keep working for that early box, that early loadout, and keep moving. So as you saw, my scav thankfully brought me towards a buy station and I cleared the tall building next to this buy station. And the reason I A, wanted to do that is I want to throw my loadout box inside a building to hide the smoke from enemies. Two, it allows me to have the height advantage if somebody was in one of those houses and I called in a loadout box. I go hit the box, get my stuff, they shoot me in the back. So as much as I can, I like to throw the loadout marker in the bottom of a building like you saw me do through the window. 
Then I went back and picked my stopping power up. Now that's also a big thing. If you have a field upgrade, you want to keep stopping power huge, 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 huge to hold on to those, load them into your SMG and get to slaying with that. But load up box, marker, in a building, hide the smoke, take the roof, much safer to hit your loadout box. Gives you that little extra time if you're um, undecided on what you want to do in a particular game. One thing you're about to watch me load in my stopping power rounds into my SMG, my MP7, which I had forgotten to do up until this point. Now, watch my total ammo. I have 60 in my gun right now and 150 spare. When I load that stopping power, my 60 goes away. I load stopping power in, and now I am short ammo. One thing you can do to alleviate this, if you're in a safe spot and you know you're in a safe spot, drop your pistol ammo all of it out of your stockpile do on console do tab drop all of the smg pistol ammo and if you're on console uh down pad on the d-pad for xbox i think it's down on the arrow sticks on ps4 whatever that is drop your smg load in your stopping power pick up your ammo you'll actually leave some ammo sitting there because you can't it, when you load the stopping power in, instead of taking it from your stockpile, it just gives it to you automatically. All right, so as I'm running towards my, my second scavenger for this game, I notice that somebody else drops a loadout over by a uh, tall building. I check him to see if he's going to be standing up to hit the box. He crouches or lays down, I'm not sure which. And because of the building right there, I did not feel comfortable running into a gunfight right there and potentially putting myself in a bad position with him being able to grab uh, high ground on me and camp those stairs. Now, he could have grabbed a fire shotgun, uh, any number of those, I mean, close quarter weapons, and he would have had the advantage there. So I elected to fall back, take the roof, and start looking for him in my heartbeat, see if he grabbed ghost or if he grabbed overkill, and start assessing my situation before I rushed into that gunfight where uh, potentially I had lesser, I did not have the ideal ground there.
strike the turret. Alright, first thing I'm going to say, don't forget to pull your chute. I generally try to pull that thing as close to the ground as I can. Didn't work out for me in this case, thankfully. I don't know what that guy was doing that land that I that I sniped at the buy station and he ran into that building. He should have easily just poked his head out the window and just shot me once and I would have been done. Regardless. Um, so I got into the building, I got plated up, I checked my heartbeat. Noticed there was a guy in the white building across from me and started peeking him with my sniper. As soon as I got a shot on him, I cracked him. Don't know how that was a headshot. It was pretty dang close to me. But so I crack him. I immediately push into that building trying to get that kill. Now, I did know that that guy that I cracked before when I died, when I went down to fall damage, thankfully I had myself res, he had a very good opportunity to beam me there. And he did. So using my movement, I got into the bathroom, got myself plated up. He ran in, easy kill, killed him. Ran back out of the house to plate up, make sure that guy upstairs wasn't going to push me. He sat in that bedroom like a coward. I walked up, beamed him, end of story. You need to stay aware of your surroundings. Now, I'm running down the middle of the street. I was kind of thinking about grabbing that vehicle. I see the guy on my right. I pull my mini map out for some reason. Pull my mini map, close my mini map, I mean, and switch to my sniper. That wasn't the right play. He turned around, was going for the vehicle. I have my sniper out. He's got an AR. It is what it is. Stay aware of your surroundings. Stay, pay attention. Don't just auto assume things like I did there. Um, if I had my MP7 out, I I probably still die there because I just didn't play that very well. But do what you can. Put yourself in the best situation. I just put myself in a terrible situation. Off to the gulag. You return to the front line. You lose, your fight is over. You're up, soldier. Great, you made it out of the gulag. Now, in an ideal world, you could have landed back into Verdansk, grabbed your stuff, kept rolling. That wasn't an option for me. I was out of zone, running in. Zone basically closed by the time I got out of the gulag, and now I need to loot. <clears throat> I go ahead and land on a scavenger. Get, again, just like before, get cash, get decent weapons, get armor, and put myself in a position where I can function end game supply box
All right, you've made it into the end game. Your movement and your decisions will dictate the outcome of the game for you. I pull up my map, see where the circle is, and make a decision based on that. Now, I know that there are two houses there. One of them has a second story. One of them does not. I want to take the building with the second story as that gives me options to use my movement to get out of a gunfight if somebody happens to push in that building, let's say with an R9 shotgun, or I just get sniped. It gives me the ability to go out one of the windows, circle around the building, and get plated back up, and then engage the gunfight at a time where I can control the situation. Now, nobody pushes me in that building, but um, that is an option for you. Always keep that in mind. Again, your decisions will dictate how the game ends for you. Yeah, I should, probably should have done that, Pindar. I figured just slapping him to death was more humiliating, so I went for that. Oh, what? You'll hear me say this uh, in the video from my stream, but I actually really liked this guy grabbing this bounty contract. And it should have worked out better for him, in my opinion, but it gives you... Grabbing a bounty like that late game, you're not really looking for the cash. But in that situation, there was, I think, three people left alive. So he knew where one of them was. I don't understand why he played the way he did in the end uh, with the zone pull, and I'll talk about that in a second. And, I mean, but he knew where one of us was on the map, which is very key end game where a lot of people have ghosts. So a UAV, your baby monitor, aren't going to be very helpful. <clears throat> Now, in regards to the zone pull, I get extremely lucky here. And if you don't, you need to rotate. In my opinion, you need to rotate around the edges as best you can while keeping cover. Cover is the most important. If you're running out in the open late game, you're done. Time to go on to the next game. It's just not going to work out for you. Now, since I got the zone pull and I saw that right away, I wanted to get into the gas. I had a gas mask. I wanted to take that, tank that gas mask, kill that and get myself in a position in the end game there where I have the best position available and just can get the last two kills of the game, which you can watch me do here in a second. Yeah, I mean, smart, smart play. I'm not, I won't dock him for that. I'm surprised it's not a red threat though. I won't lie. You ask and you shall receive, I suppose. Oh, that was ugly as fuck. Holy shit. All right. Had a wave. G, G is Moxie. Thank you. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite understand why the, I think the bounty was looking for the person I killed first. I don't quite understand why she went, wasn't looking down. Yeah, you might not have been looking though either. 10 kills. Alrighty folks, that does it for my solos tips and tricks. Hopefully you learned something out of all that. Um, I know that's that's generally how I try to play solos. 
it's worked out fairly well for me so far. Um, I do want to say, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe for future videos, and tap that bell icon for notifications when I post new content. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Thank you.